All right, running back. Three bust running backs for fantasy football this year based on ADP, Tony. So think of things that we see like, hey, where are guys getting drafted? Are they going to meet that value or not? Like just things that are like seem so obvious to us in general, but are opposite of what the public says. Uh, we'll go one for one. You can start with your three and then uh, we'll go three, two, one alternating. Absolutely. So you're going to like this first one. Um, I tried to pick some different guys than what you had, at least the last time I looked like two days ago yeah, it's um, at your, at your notes. Okay, good. Just to give the loyal listeners some variety on guys. We feel that are being a little overvalued uh, at this point, the ADPs, they're just too rich. Uh, my first one, Brees Hall. So based off ESPN ADP, he's going off the board as the RB 15 or an RB two, right? Uh, mm -hmm. That 13 to 24 range. Uh, we mentioned they just signed Delvin cook. They have Michael Carter they drafted two years ago. They have Bam Knight they drafted last year. And then this year they drafted Israel at Bonaconda. They're all really solid running backs. They've done well on the field in limited NFL action. Uh, Bonaconda so far has looked good, hasn't played a regular season snap. But he's probably pretty solid. I don't know if he's the odd man out. But it feels like what the Jets are going to have is a messy RBBC, so a running back by committee. I'm sure Robert Sala is going to want to emphasize the run with the game plan for the team uh, as a whole. And I think the team might finish as a top 15 unit, but I don't see how any of these guys pay off at ADP, especially Brees Hall. And that's why he's my number one running back bust for the season. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I would just looked at my ranking thing and I, I have him outside of the top 24. I have Dalvin up at 18, but I think I'll probably bump him down closer to 22 or something like that. 22 to 24 yeah. or somewhere around there, but. Yep, so I'm going to go with my number one, everybody's love child. That is Jameer Gibbs. So Jameer Gibbs is being drafted as running back 14 at ADP of 44. So that's middle of the fourth round. Yep. Um, my thing is that he's going to be on the back end of a split. And they got the old David Montgomery there. It's going to be the same kind of thing that we saw last year with Swift and Jamal Williams. And yep. Montgomery's going to be the short yardage guy. Short yardage guy. He's going to be the goal line back that's filling in for that Jamal Williams role. They didn't bring in him to sit there and catch a bunch of passes and all this kind of stuff. That's why they drafted this other dude. That's how I see this opposite offense going. So it's just not worth the price when the touchdowns won't be there. He'll catch some balls, you know, or whatever like that. But everybody mm -hmm. expects Jared Goff to take another step forward. He's looked really good in the training camp stuff and team, you know, the team practices with other teams and all that. And everybody's high on the guys like Amon Ra, Hawkinson, everybody's person who can't stay healthy jameson williams who's also suspended nope. for six weeks too who still gets drafted in redraft is mind-boggling to me i need those people in my league but for me jameer gibbs is not even in the top 24 running backs i currently have him at oh, wow. 26 so he's sitting at 26 right. for me i don't have him in the top 24 back against the wall you need a running back gibbs and montgomery on the board which one are you taking in a full ppr league montgomery Okay. I would take Montgomery over him. So, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Because right. <clears throat> if I'm drafting right. that far back, like I'm going to get Jameer Gibbs, right? And they're not going to get drafted. I don't know what Montgomery's ADP is, but I assume it is rounds behind. ESPN, he's the RB26. Yeah. So about 10, 10 to 12 spots behind Gibbs. Yeah. So what, you're probably you're looking, looking like two rounds because you got people drafting their tight ends, quarterbacks within those rounds, uh, filling in some of those wide receivers. So uh, I can see Montgomery. You know, and Jameer Gibbs is going to get preseason work. We're going to see that here this week or something like that or okay. the next week. So I assume that Gibbs is going to go up a little bit because people are going to be like, oh, this, that, the other, right? But I'm just, I'm just not in on Jameer Gibbs. So, so you see it just as a better value. You're saving a couple rounds yeah, yeah. there. I'd rather get Dave yeah, Montgomery. And then, you know, if they, if they can move the ball like they did last year, Dave Montgomery is going to end up with double-digit double, double touchdowns. Jameer Gibbs going to have like four. And that's going to be like a, a 40, 60 point swing. You're going to ask this guy to sit there and oh, catch yeah. a bunch of balls, 50 extra balls or whatever like that. And then also have the rushing yardage that you're going to get out of Dave Montgomery. I just don't see it. So, yeah, that makes sense. And that's, those are the types of things you should be looking at yeah. um, in like those scenarios. But all right, cool for me. My second one, this one um, and my next one may be uh, a little unfair, but it's Jonathan Taylor. I'm staying away from JT given the contract dispute, given you know his injury recovery. I think it was an ankle. Uh, he had surgery around over the off season. He's got a back or something like that. I don't. I don't really know who to believe him or the owner, mm -hmm. uh, Jim Irsay. Given the shit that Jim Irsay is coming out and saying, right, all of those things, and just given what he's got going on there, he's the overall RB six. So I think that's in the second round. I don't have the overall pick, but that's about where he's been going in mock drafts. I'm not touching it. It's too much risk. You want these guys getting reps in practice and camp, and he's not getting that right now. Yep. And then what does it do for the rest of the team, right, when this guy's not even there? 
it just and how they they've signed what two or three other running backs to fill in mm-hmm. on top of what they already had right with Deion Jackson and those guys. And, it, and the, the hard thing is that with Jonathan Taylor, it seems like it's just a it's just his new agent because back in May he was like, "Yep, I'm going to play. I'm going to be with the team. This at the other right. You know, yep. I got a contract as it is. We'll work through it. If it doesn't get done before, I'm still going to be there. This is this gets a new agent, yep. and all of a sudden he's this new person. So it's like, yo, who are you?" Right? Mm-hmm. Who are you? Who are you really for, or whatever like that? Because you said all these things that we believed were you beforehand, and now you're this. So I think that's where you're getting all that kind of stuff. But. Yeah, I, I think he will play. He has literally no leverage, and like I, I am usually for the player, but when you're trying to negotiate a deal, what three years into a five potentially five year deal, at least four, yep. right? They have the option to pick up the fifth year next year because he's a first round pick. Like I, I don't see him basically controlling this at all. Like he's he's going to have to play to accumulate time, and if he does that. Is he going to play through an injury, which a lot of these guys do, right? They get a shot and they play through it. Mm-hmm. I don't think he'll do that if he's on the field, which he's going to have to be. So I'm just staying away, yeah. like completely from him and one of the other guys I'll mention. This is like your Lamar Jackson from last year, or Michael Thomas, or something. Or it's like, well, they're not happy with something. Yeah. Do they have a little aching pain or whatever like that? Could they play? Probably, right? But you never know what the situation is, and it's just going to be the story all year. He's a guy that, unless he's like there starting Monday next week. And he's in every practice and doing everything right. I'm going to play this, this, this. And you get two to two and a half weeks of him practicing mm-hmm. with the team and everything's good. Then I just start touching him. Yeah. He's undrafted. I'll, I'll, I'll let someone else deal with yeah. that. that. That's a lot of risk. It doesn't even matter if it's like in the on. fifth round. I'm just not going to touch it because yeah. you never know what it's going to be. I don't want to deal with that. So my yeah. number two is going to be second? J.K. Dobbins. So he's being drafted as the RB19 right now at ADP58. That's the back end of the fifth round. Uh, new okay. offense that's expected to throw the ball a lot more. And the dude just has chronic knee injuries, chronic knee issues. He's going to be sharing a backfield. If Lamar Jackson, which people expect Lamar Jackson to still continue to run. I don't as much as he normally does. Right. And especially at the goal line, you're going to just say goodbye to all his touchdowns. Yeah. Get rid of any touchdowns that you can predict out of the running backs, you know, give them like three, four, on the season because that's probably what it's going to be like they're going to have a lot more passing and all that kind of stuff off of those runs so i can see more passing touchdowns for lamar which means less rushing touchdowns for jk dobbins and really if you look at that whole scenario of he ends up with less touchdowns he's injury prone with knee issues they're not going to run the ball as much because they're going to be a more of a pass heavy offense and tempo what's the real difference between him and a guy like Khalil herbert who I have absolutely no interest in. I have no interest in that entire Bears backfield whatsoever. It's like a three-headed monster plus Justin Fields. I don't want to touch it. What's the difference between him, Alexander Madison, say a guy like Brian Robinson, or even your three-game suspended Alvin Kamara, right? Um, That you can get all of those guys after pick 100, and you're going to waste one on J.K. Dobbins at 58. You love the dude. He runs good. When he's on the field, he's good. He's just never on the field, and he's going to lose touchdowns to Lamar Jackson. I'm out on J.K. Dobbins. It's way too high. Yeah, and you got to you got to check me here on this. I haven't seen the tweets or the reports, but I've heard this, I think, on a couple other shows. He woke up recently <coughs> and said that Jesus told him he should get his knee scoped or something. Is that – am I making shit up right now? I don't know. I could tell you uh, after Sunday morning when I go – I'll talk to the pastor and stuff like that, and we'll okay. see what's going okay. on. Let me, yeah, <laughs> let, let, let me know if Jesus spoke to him about his knee. Like, I, I'm curious I if ch- there's some lingering issues, and like, is it? A, I think it is a thing. Like, I think he is having some procedure done. But is it that, or is it like another contract? Like, kind of. Yeah, he's in there, but he's also holding out. Yeah, a hold in. I think is what they call it. It makes no sense to have a hold in or a hold out or nothing like that with a guy like J.K. Dobbins who doesn't play football. So. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah. All right. My third one here. So, like I said, these last two are kind of unfair. This one's Josh Jacobs. He's going as an RB7, so kind of in the similar territory is Jonathan Taylor. He's also holding out for a contract. He's not even with the team, per reports. He flew out of Vegas. Not great for a running back, missing all of that conditioning, um, all of that contact now that we're in camp and we're in preseason week two. I think that started uh, yesterday. And then just working with the new quarterback in Jimmy G, he just got there, right? He's just practicing himself, uh, kind of getting the offense uh, installed. That all counts for something. Like if he does get a deal the week before the season starts, you're probably accepting just a lot more risk uh, than you would otherwise in drafting him at that ADP, which is rich. Again, that is a, that's about the second round. Yeah. So another probably stay away from me, even if he gets a deal like next week or you know the first week of September, probably just staying away. Yeah, that one's rough because 
it's nice that he's in a contract year because <laughs> that's yeah. that's why I like Josh Jacobs last Mot- year. Motivation. It's like, yeah. oh, this is about a time to get a deal done before you get franchise tagged and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm, not there, um, which makes it a little bit tougher. But it makes you really like a guy like Tony Pollard a lot more. Right, who's just like fuck it, like I'm gonna yeah, play on the tag. He's, also, right? he's tagged. He signed it. Yeah, he's why I like he's guys like Kirk Cousins. Right, and you're just like screw it. You're gonna tag me twice. <laughs> Whatever. I'm gonna throw for five G's. <laughs> you know, perennial. And then he's gonna, perennially tagged. He's like the guy who who's done it better than anybody else and making money in the NFL. It's crazy, yeah. and nobody respects him as a quarterback. It's it's wild. The guy just does his job well. So. My third, I've talked about it ad nauseum on your show. If you want to hear the full kind of recap of this, you can go over to the 58 West King podcast. This link below. Check out the AFC coaching changes. Pretty it's good. a long one, but it's a good one, I think. So my third one is going to be Austin Eckler. And this is my number one fate of all in all of fantasy football in 2023. You got Joe Lombardi no longer being the offensive coordinator there. And he's the guy who's responsible for guys like Pierre Thomas, Theo Riddick, Joyk Bell, Alvin Kamara, and then went to the Chargers two years ago, Austin Eckler. Um, so yeah. what you see in Austin Eckler is a direct result of Joe Lombardi. And this year, the receptions just aren't going to be there in that Eric Coriel offense with Kellen Moore calling the place. He's 28-year-old running back uh, who will be in even a bigger split than he was the last couple years as well, too. Because if you look at the way that Kellen Moore splits the running backs in his time in Dallas, you're looking more of a 60-40, 55-45 type of split out of the other running backs. And for a guy who's never rushed over 1,000 yards in a season... And nowhere close to 90 targets, like targets, not receptions this year in the passing game. Being the second running back off the board and a top five pick for me is a no thank you. And for those that are opposed to what I'm saying, if what they were doing before in passing the ball to Austin Eckler and the way that they were structured their offense was so good and beneficial to the team, why would they bring in a new coordinator and have him do the exact same thing when – they have him change the entire offensive scheme from a West Coast style offense to Air Coriel, four vert type of offense, and draft mm-hmm. another large receiver if they're going to do the same things. It's unbeneficial to the team. People say, yep, but they had injuries to the wide receiver. They didn't have anyone on the field. It doesn't matter. Your scheme doesn't change because of the personnel that are in there. That's just not what happens in the NFL. You have dudes, you run the same type of plays because that's what your the rest of your offense is based off of. You run certain things to get looks so that you can run other things off of those same looks and stuff like that. So it's just not going to be there. Austin Eckler, direct fade. He's bottom end RB1. I don't even want to draft him back there either. So that's just my take. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what tier you have him in. It's that it's be good. I swear be good. this victory lap is going to be so fucking good. So yeah, um, let's get it on record. Yep, yeah, let's get it on the tape. Yeah. It's on the tape. We've been saying this, you know, for what a month and a half now, or something like that. To tag, make sure when you post this, you tag that fantasy receipts. Yeah, this is with the Eckler taken in bold. Mid June started talking about this <laughs> stuff, right? So, like Austin Eckler hasn't played any preseason football. Right. Or anything like that either. So it's yeah. like just way out there before. We'll clip this later on to shove it oh, in yeah. your guys' fucking face. So um yeah, I can't wait till somebody takes that. 